Hi there. If you're watching this video, there's a very good chance you have recently taken delivery of a brand new Ford Transit Nugget camper from myself at Keith Motors. Therefore, I'm recording this video that you can enjoy from the comfort of your home, uh, basically how it all works, because of course under COVID-19 regulations, I'm unable to do a full handover experience with yourself. So please sit back, enjoy the video, and let me show you how it all works, basically. So the Nugget is equipped with five doors, two at the front and three in the back. The sliding doors work very, very simply. Pull the handle to open them up, slide them back until you hear a click, and that will prevent them from sliding forward. And the rear door can either be opened by pushing a little button down here or double pressing a button on the key. So the Nugget is equipped with two tables, one for the outside and one for the inside. Uh, they're stored at various points throughout the vehicle. So I'm going to do a demonstration of taking the table off the tailgate, which is where the outside table is stored. And then I'll do a demonstration of putting the table up on the inside. Now the inside table is actually stored underneath the kitchen sink, but I've taken it out of that because I don't want to make it look like so much of a fab. But let me just show you how the table is assembled. It's now perfectly rigid. Put the table on like that and then just tighten it with a screw so it's perfectly rigid like that. And then you can sit back and it's all done. Right, so the kitchen's very, very simple. You've got your sink, you've got your cooker, and you've got your fridge. And obviously, I'm sure you know how a sink works, but the cooker, open it just up like this. You've got your two knobs for your two hobs, and the button to create the spark. The fridge, again, very simple. Just open it straight up like that. And you can also get a little basket which can contain some smaller items to stop them rolling around inside. You've also got two three pin plugs, one on this side, and then one just behind the cooker, and of course a 12 volt socket as well. Leading on from that, you've got two angleable lights. Just there and there, just so you can angle the light to be where you want it to be. This ladder, of course, can be stowed away inside this cupboard, using these clips just here. which just locks in there. Other than that, you've got a little drawer for your cutlery. Two little storage drawers down here, which also controls your gas and your water supply. And some extra storage just in there. <laughs> if, if the thing stays open. Now your gas and your grey water supplies are both contained underneath this cushion. So what you need to do, remove the cushion and you're presented with two little plates. Once you remove these, which is easily done, he says, you've got your bottles for your grey water and your fresh water. And once you unscrew this lid, you've of course got your gas. Other than that, there's also a control for your electricity. Hopefully you can hear me okay, which is just controlled down here. So if you want to turn all the electricity off in the nugget, simply twist this anti-clockwise and I'm in pitch black and then you can turn it back on again and hopefully the lights will start turning on. <laughs> um, other than that, you've also got your pump for your sink and a few fuses. Now the power's all back on, we can actually talk about the lights. So as you can see, there's LED strip lighting absolutely everywhere, which is dimmable which is using this switch just here. If you push that, it goes to a little, little bit of a warmer glow. So say if you're sitting in the evening, but you can make it a bit brighter, say if you're cooking or reading or something like that. They're controlled by using a couple of switches, which are just behind the umbrella, which is just here. And there's also a switch by the kitchen for easy access just there. 
If you do need some extra visibility, the Nugget actually does come with an extra lamp, which you can move around depending on where's the tw where a 12 volt socket is inside the vehicle. Say for example, if you want a bit more light in the kitchen, plug it straight in like that, which you can then turn on. Same goes for in the living section, there's a 12 volt socket, which you can just see here. Just plugs in like that and you can turn on. Right, it's getting late. Bedtime. <laughs> right, so I'm going to try and make this look like as little of a faff as possible when folding the rock and roll bed out. But before you do that, you've got to make sure that both your driver and your passenger seats are folded forward as far as they'll go. Otherwise, the bed won't have enough length to actually move all the way forward. So what I'm going to do is show you just down here. Now, on the front of the passenger seats, you'll see you get two levers. So one moves the bed forward and backwards, and one moves it well, basically releases the bed so you can actually fold it forward and actually turn it into a bed. So what I'm going to do, if I move this lever, all the way forward, now it's in a showroom, so it's a bit of squash and a squeeze. And then what I'm going to do is fold it down. So this is the first half of the bed. Now the second half, if I just cl clamber forward, it's just controlled using this little bar, which just locks it in place, as you can just see there. And there's your first bed. And your head goes this side, and your feet go this side, unlike the bed upstairs, which I'm gonna show you now. Okay, so first things first, you've got to make sure the roof is up, obviously. Now, it's very, very simple to put the roof up on a Transit Nugget. It's only one clip, which is just here. So you've got to release the clip, use this grab handle to pull down so that the, um, there's basically a little clip just down here, make sure it clears the top of the roof. And then all you have to do, just push up like this, and then the hydraulics do the rest until you hear a click, and then it's done. So first things first, you've got to make sure the ladder is out which is just in this cupboard, as I showed you earlier. Get it took in place and then just release. What you don't want to do is put the feet down first and then clip it in place, because otherwise these clips might not actually hold the ladder onto. Uh, and that means the ladder will fold back, which is obviously not ideal. So make sure the clips are on first and then just release the legs like I did just then. So what you need to do, go up a rung or so, and you'll find two little clips. Move, release one, release the other, and clip the bed down like that. Now the bed actually has two runners either side, so you've got to make sure that when the bed comes down it is fitted evenly within those two runners. Grab the end of the bed, give it a pull, and it's released like that. Right, so when you get up here, you're gonna have two clips, both of which are to make sure that the, um, the canvas on the actual pop top remains in place when you fold the roof down. So once you're up and the bed's up, you can get rid of those, get rid of them down here. Um, and other than that, it's just a bed. You've got three windows, one behind you and on the side just here. Now they can open completely and they can just reveal a mosquito net to obviously make sure that you don't get uh, bugs coming in when you're trying to sleep. If you do have little ones up here, you've also got a child's net, which is fitted just underneath, and that clips into the two clips, which are just up there, which normally keep the bed in place. So if you do have little ones in there, you do actually have that little bit of extra security on that side of things. Uh, underneath, you also get some plastic springs. Now this is something that Ford have used to give you a little bit more mattress depth. So don't need to do anything with them, just plonk a mattress on there and they'll be good to go. Putting the bed away is exactly the same as when you take it down. All you need to do, come up a couple of rungs on the ladder, push all the way up, and then it will clip in to these few clips just down here. Then once that's in place, you're all good to go. So when taking the pop top down, you've got to be very, very careful and very, very wary of the canvas. If the canvas gets pinched in the mechanism, it will lose a bit of its waterproofness. So just make sure that you take extra care when taking the pop top down. Now, to take the pop top down, 
there is a little safety which you need to push in to make sure obviously someone doesn't accidentally take the pop top down. So what you need to do, push that in, grab the little loop up here and simply pull. Pull it down to about halfway, which is when the roof will stop supporting itself. Before you actually lower it fully, you want to make sure that all the canvas is tucked in as much as possible. Just make sure it's inside the vehicle. Once the top is down, you can actually start to tuck it in. So don't worry too much about that. Just make sure it's inside for the time being. What I should also, also mention is these little straps here. Make sure that you keep um, that you fasten those before we take the pop top down because that will help pull the awning in um, and the canvas as well. Once the top is down and you've neatened it up as much as you like, what you need to do is pull this down on this strap as much as you can. Make sure that this is horizontal. Line it up with the actual clip and then just pull down like that and that will lock it in place. Now, as I was explaining all the other features in the Nugget, you may have noticed this screen just behind me. Now, this screen is how you control stuff you like your water temperature, your heating and cooling, and of course your refrigerator, okay? Now, it's very, very simple to use. Uh, there is an instruction manual that will come with every, with every vehicle that I've made sure that was delivered to you when you collect the vehicle as well. Um, but this is a rundown as to how it works. I'm just gonna get my colleague to zoom in slightly. So let's say, for example, you want to adjust stuff like your refrigerator. So rotate the knob until the refrigerator button is highlighted. Push the center of the dial forward and rotate this knob Press these little arrow keys up and down to control how cold you want your fridge. So I'm going to set it on number four because we've got some iced coffees on their way. And press it again and you'll go back to the main menu. Now the same procedure is of course with your heating and cooling and your refrigerator and your water. So it's the same procedure for all of them. Now aside from all the other seating in this vehicle, you do of course get two swivelable captain's chairs which are rotated using this little lever, which is just down here, which is separate from, of course, the lever that moves the chairs forward and backwards. You've got to make sure the back side of the chair is upright, because otherwise it won't turn properly, okay? So what you need to do, twist it all the way around until it locks in place, and then if you want to swivel it back, go around, pull that lever again, and then it will swivel back to where it needs to be. At that point, you can then adjust it whatever position you want. You've of course got two armrests which are adjustable and there's also a little knob just down on the other side of the seat which is for your lumbar support. So to start off on the driver assistance side of things and obviously in the driver's seat there's absolutely loads of features that I need to go through on this side of things. So first things first let me go through the 8 inch touch screen which is of course standard on the Nugget. Depending on what options you get it may or may not come with navigation but I will make sure I go through that anyway for the people that do. So to start off with, on the uh, radio side of things, what you need to do, let's say for example, you want to preset a station in. At the moment, as you can see, I've got radio two. You want to preset a station in, you go in, of course, into station list. Or if you want to say, listen to DAB radio rather than FM, select DAB. So there you go, you want to program in Absolute Radio 90s. Select Absolute Radio 90s. Here. Let's say, for example, you want to program that into preset two. What you have to do, simply press and hold, and it closes to that station. Traffic stands for, uh, well, TA stands for traffic announcements. Let's say, for example, you're in a place that you don't know, which you may well be in a camper van such as this, and you want to know about the current traffic situation, simply highlight that, and it will interrupt the traffic up, uh, the radio that you're listening to, <laughs> to give you live traffic updates. Let's say you want to program in a phone. Search for your vehicle on your device and select it once it is found. All you need to do, go into the Bluetooth menu on your device, select Ford Transit, and it will come straight up for you. Navigation. So this vehicle is currently in transit mode, so the navigation won't be working, but I'll of course make sure I go through that with you if you'd like. Mobile apps is only really relevant when you plug your phone in. And of course, you've got all the settings in the vehicle. Simply swipe across, more like an iPad, so you can look in the automatic updates, all the vehicle settings, and all that kind of thing. Bear in mind, this system is brand spanking new, so it may take a 
few seconds to speed up when you've got your new nugget. After you've had it about a week, it will speed up and be a lot more snappy and responsive. You've got five buttons just down here. Now, of course, a lot of them are very self-explanatory. You've got your play, pause buttons and the buttons to skip track. And of course, all your sound settings. If you want to turn the screen off, now, of course, when you're driving at night, it will go to negative colors, so it's not so distracting. But if you want to turn the screen off entirely, press this button, it will go to a clock. And if you press it again, it turns off completely. Now to turn it back on, you can either press that button or you just simply touch the screen and it comes back to life. Now this vehicle is equipped with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, so depending on your preference, plug your phone into the little USB port, which is just shown down here, and it will allow you to access either of those. There is also a USB port, which is just above the center binnacle, um, which I'm sure you'll see as soon as you get in the vehicle. Your climate control settings are really, really self-explanatory as well. This knob is how you increase and decrease your fan speed. And of course, this button is for your temperature, or this knob, I should say. Of course, you've got the max AC and your max heating, i.e. if your car's either frosted over or boiling on the inside. This little button down here is key, which is for your heated front windscreen. Testament to a lot of Fords. Uh, let's say, for example, your nugget's all frosted over on a cold winter's morning. Press that button and it will all melt off in about a minute and a half. So it's really, really useful. These buttons down here are, of course, for your traction control, your driving mode settings, and for your parking sensors. Now the modes for the Nugget, there are only two. There's normal and eco mode. So let's say, for example, you want to put it in eco mode. What it will do is it will um, make the engine a little bit less powerful and make the throttle response a bit lazier, a bit nicer on a longer journey. And that you've got your hazard switch just down here. Now, six-speed manual gearbox, which if you want to put it in reverse, you have to pull up a little collar on the gear lever and move it across and back like that. And then what will tell, what will show you whether you're in reverse is if you have a reversing camera, it will come up on the eight-inch touchscreen. Uh, if you don't have a reversing camera, the front and rear sensor part pilot system will also come up on the touchscreen as well. Now, the buttons on the steering wheel are very, very useful. Now, this vehicle is equipped with adaptive cruise control. Even if it's not, the buttons will remain very, very similar. Now, if you want to set your cruise control, what you need to do is press this button just down here. Move this button that says res up or down to set your speed. To cancel it, just press that button there. And on this button, on this vehicle, like I say, because it's got adaptive cruise control, you can adjust how close you are to the car in front. These buttons here control this little center screen here. It's very, very self-explanatory. I won't go through that for the time being. Other than that, I think that's all I've got to go through on the driver assistance side. Let's hop out and have a little debrief. Overall, that concludes my handover video for the brand new Transit Nugget. I hope you found it interesting. Uh, thank you so much for your business on behalf of myself and Keith Motors. If you have any further questions or if you'd like to contact me for any reason, I'll link all my contact details down in the description below. But overall, enjoy your new camper. Bye for now.